An overview of parasites for microbiology. Approximately 2 million people die every year from malaria. Malaria is an infection caused by a protozoan parasite and is carried from person to person via mosquitoes. To eliminate malaria, American officials established the National Malaria Eradication Program on July 1, 1947. By 1950, after more than 4 million homes had been sprayed with DDT, a pesticide to kill mosquitoes, only 2,000 malaria cases were reported. By 1952, the United States was malaria-free and the program ended. Parasites are organisms that must live in or on another organism in order to get nourishment. The study of parasitic organisms is called parasitology. There are two different groups of eukaryotic parasites of concern to microbiologists because of their ability to cause infectious diseases. These are single-celled parasites called protists and multicellular parasites referred to as the helminths. Helminths meaning worm. The phylogeny of parasites includes four eukaryotic kingdoms. Everything besides the land, plants, and animals can be considered microbial, and everything besides the land, plants, animals, and fungi would be considered in the kingdom protista. Protista include plant-like organisms, fungal-like organisms, and animal-like organisms. The protists are primarily unicellular, However, the functions of the single cell bear a resemblance to the functions of multicellular organisms. Most protists are free-living and thrive where there is water. They may be located in damp soil, mud, drainage ditches, and puddles. Some species remain attached to aquatic plants or rocks, while other species may swim about independently. The dinoflagellates are part of the freshwater and marine phytoplankton. They are able to be both heterotrophic and photosynthetic, making them important primary producers in the world's oceans. Some dinoflagellates cause the infamous red tides. The radiolarians are marine phytoplankton that have highly sculptured and glassy silica plates with radiating cytoplasmic arms to capture prey. The skeletons of dead radiolarians litter the ocean floor, forming deposits sometimes hundreds of meters thick, called the radiolarian ooze. The foraminiferans, or forams, are marine protists that have chalky skeletons, often in the shape of a snail shell, with openings between the sections. The term foram means little hole. The shells of dead forams form sediments hundreds of meters thick. When brought to the surface by geological uprising, massive white cliffs may form. The diatomes are another group of single-celled protists. Diatomes carry out photosynthesis and compose an important part of phytoplankton found in marine and freshwater environments. The omycetes are fungal-like and are completely heterokaryotic because they absorb extracellularly digested food materials. These protists resemble fungal because they produce a filamentous growth characteristic of moles. The protists traditionally have been called protozoa, proto meaning first, and zo meaning animal. One supergroup of protists are the group Excavata. This group contains species that are single-celled and possess flagella or motility. Some members in this group may represent organisms whose ancestors were the earliest of eukaryotic organisms. Members of the parabasalids lack mitochondria and, as such, live in low oxygen or anaerobic environments. Several species, including Trichonympha, are found in the guts of termites, where these symbionts participate in mutualistic relationships. Another species, called Trichomonas vaginalis, is a parasite that can attack humans. This parasite can be transmitted through sexual intercourse. The diplomonad have two haploid nuclei and three pairs of flagella at the anterior end and one pair at the posterior end, giving the cell bilateral symmetry. The most notable species of diplomonads is Giardia intestinalis. Giardia intestinalis is spread through contaminated water and thus affects the gastrointestinal Tract. The diplomonad can survive outside the anaerobic environment of the intestines by forming a cyst, which is a dormant, highly resistant stage. Many lakes and rivers in the United States are contaminated with such cysts. Hikers and campers must first boil or filter water before drinking. 
Another set of protists in the Escavata supergroup is the Euglenozoa. Among these are the Kinetoplastids, which is another ancient lineage of heterotrophic species. A unique characteristic of these species is a single posterior flagellum that is attached to the cell's wavy, undulating membrane. The kinetoplastids have a typical array of eukaryotic organelles and a single mitochondrion that contains a mass of DNA called the kinetoplast. Some 60% of the kinetoplastid species are trypanosomes. Trypano means home, and soma means body. This name refers to the hole the organism bores to enter and infect a host. Two trypanosoma species are transmitted by insects and cause forms of human sleeping sickness in Africa and South America, affecting millions of people. Another supergroup is the amoebozoa. The amoebas are mostly free-living, single-celled organisms, but they can be as large as one millimeter in diameter. They usually live in freshwater or marine environments and reproduce by binary fission. The amoeba are soft-bodied organisms that have the ability to change shape. Amoeba means to change. This shape change occurs as their cytoplasm flows into a temporary formless cytoplasmic projection called a pseudopod. Pseudopod means false foot. This false foot allows for motion and in amoebas can be called amoeboid motion. The genus Entamoeba can be far more serious as all species are parasitic. In humans, amoebic dysentery or encephalitis may result from drinking water or consuming food contaminated with amoebal cysts. Amoebic dysentery is the third leading cause of death due to parasitic infection. Another group are the chromal violata. This group is very diverse and includes the dinoflagellates and the diatomes. The ciliated protozoans, or ciliates, are among the most complex cells on Earth and have been the subject of biological investigations for decades. The chromal violata are found in almost any pond water sample. They have a variety of shapes and can exhibit elaborate and controlled behavioral patterns. The apicomplexans are so named because the apical tip of the cell contains a complex of organelles used for penetrating host cells. Adult apicomplexans have no cilia or flagella, conjugation and reproduction in paramecium. Ciliates, such as paramecium, reproduce asexually by the process of conjugation. In this process, an exchange of micronuclei to new macronuclei. In this process, two compatible cells make contact and a cytoplasmic bridge forms between them. The micronucleus in each paramecium undergoes meiosis to form four micronuclei per cell as the old macronuclei disintegrate. Three micronuclei disintegrate and the one remaining undergoes mitosis. An exchange of micronuclei takes place. The cells then separate, the micronuclei fuse, and the macronuclei is disintegrated. The new macronucleus forms in each of the cell from mitotic divisions of the micronucleus. There are also many protozoal diseases of the skin, the digestive tract, and the urinary tracts. One of these is leishmaniasis. There are two main forms of leishmaniasis. Leishmaniasis major causes a disfiguring cutaneous skin disease. The other form of leishmaniasis is visceral, meaning body organs. This disease is called kala azar, meaning black fever. Black fever is caused by leishmaniasis donovani. L major causes a disfiguring cutaneous disease affecting the skin. Within a few weeks after being bitten, a sore appears on the skin. The sore then expands and ulcerates to resemble a volcano with a raised edge and a central crater. L donovani causes the other form of leishmaniasis. It causes the visceral or body organ form of the disease, called kala arzar, meaning black fever. Symptoms do not appear until several months after being bitten by a sand fly. Infection of the white blood cells leads to irregular bouts of fever, swollen spleen, enlarged liver, progressive anemia, and emaciation. About 90% of these cases are fatal if not treated. Amoebiasis 
is a disease caused by Entamoeba histolytica. The parasite enters the body as a cyst, which develops into an amoeboid form that causes deep ulcers. Cysts are ingested and passed through the stomach. The amoebas emerge from the cysts in the terminal small intestine. The amoebas then form deep ulcers. Perforation of the large intestine leads to infection of the peritoneal cavity. Some amoebas form cysts and pass out of the body in the form of feces. These cysts remain alive in the environment and can be transmitted to another organism if ingested as a contaminant in food or water. Some amoebas pass into the bloodstream and infect other organs. There are three groups of parasitic diseases caused by different supergroups of protists, including the amoebozoans, the apicoplexins, and the conidoplastids. Amoebiasis is a parasitic form of gastroenteritis. Amoebiasis occurs worldwide and primarily affects children and adults who are undernourished and living in unsanitary conditions. Although an intestinal illness at first, it can spread to various organ systems. Between 40,000 and 100,000 people die each year from amoebiasis. The causative agent of amoebiasis is Entamoeba histolytica. In nature, the protozoan exists in the cyst form. In 2007, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, received reports of almost 20,000 cases of giardiasis, making it the most commonly detected protozoal disease of the intestinal tract in the United States. Because not all are reported to the CDC, the disease is estimated to cause 100,000 to 2.5 million infections, primarily in the summer and early fall. The causative agent is the Diplomonad giardia intestinalis, also known as G. lamblia. Since 1976, outbreaks of cryptosporidiosis have been reported in several countries. The most remarkable outbreak occurred in 1993 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where more than 400,000 people were affected and 54 died, making it the largest waterborne infection ever recorded in the United States. In 2007, there were 11,170 reported cases, with the highest number of reported cases in children between 1 and 9 years of age. Cryptosporidiosis is caused by the apicoplexins, cryptosporidium, parvum, and C. hominis. In the late 1990s, public health officials in the United States identified a series of clusters of intestinal disease related to the consumption of raspberries imported from Guatemala. In 2004 and 2005, outbreaks in Texas, Illinois, and Florida sickened over 400 people after eating raw basil. In all cases, the outbreaks were related to the apicomplexin cyclospora caetinensis. Trichomoniasis is among the most common pathogenic protozoan diseases in men and women in industrialized countries, including the United States, where an estimated 7.4 million new cases occur annually. The disease is transmitted primarily by sexual contact and is considered a sexually transmitted disease. Trichomonas vaginalis is the causative agent. It is pear-shaped and flagellated and is a protozoan of the parabasilids. The protozoal parasites that cause infections in the blood or in the nervous system includes two of the most prevalent diseases, malaria and sleeping sickness. Malaria is caused by four species of A. complexian genus Plasmodium, including P. vivax, P. oval, P. malariae, and P. falciparum. All are transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquito, which consumes human blood to provide chemical components for her eggs. The most serious malaria infections can be life-threatening and are caused by P. falciparum. The propagation of plasmodium parasites requires two hosts, mosquitoes and humans. The life cycle of the parasites has three important stages, the sporozoite, the merozoite, and the gametocyte. The female Anopheles mosquito bites an individual and acquires the plasmodium gametocytes in the blood. The gametes develop and fuse in the mosquito's digestive tract to form a zygote. The zygote undergoes development to form an oocyst. Sporozytes develop in the cysts. Thousands of sporozytes emerge from the oocyst and invade the salivary gland. Plasmodium sporozoites are transferred during the next mosquito bite. The sporozoites enter the liver and undergo transformation into merozoites. Merozoites emerge from the liver and penetrate red blood cells. In the red blood cells, merozoites become ring and amoeboid forms, then revert back to merozoites. 
Thousands of red blood cells are disrupted as the merozoites emerge, many reinvading other red blood cells, causing the cycles of fever and chills. Some merozoites eventually develop into male or female gametocytes that will continue the life cycle. Trypanosomiasis is a general name for two diseases caused by the parasite kinetoplastid trypanosoma. The two diseases caused by trypanosomes are traditionally known as human African disease sickness and Chagas disease. Human African sleeping sickness is endemic in 36 African countries and exerts a level of mortality greater than that of HIV or AIDS. Trypanosoma cycles between humans and the tsetse fly. The insect bites an infected patient or animal, and the trypanosomes localize in the insect's salivary glands. After a two-week development period, transmission occurs during a bite. The point of entry becomes a painful and swollen sore, and in several days, develops into a canker similar to sores that exist in syphilis. Invasion of and multiplication in the bloodstream then follows stage one. In stage two, it spreads to the central nervous system. Two types of African sleeping sickness exist. A chronic form common in Central and Western Africa is caused by Trypanosoma brucei variety gambians. It is accompanied by chronic bouts of fever as well as severe headaches, changes in sleep patterns, and a general wasting away. As trypanosomes invade the brain, the patient slips into a coma, hence the name sleeping. The second form is common in Eastern and Southern Africa and is due to the Trypanosoma brucei variety rhodisians. The disease is more acute, with a high fever and rapid coma proceeding in death. American trypanosomiasis, or Chagas disease, is found in Mexico and 17 countries in Central and South America. A recent estimate put a number of cases in South America and Central America at 18 million with approximately 200,000 new cases each year, causing 50,000 deaths. Chagas disease is caused by Trypanosoma cruzi and is transmitted by the Reduvian bug. This insect feeds at night and bites where the skin is thin, such as on the forearms, face, and lips. For this reason, it is called the kissing bug. Babesiosis, found in the northeastern United States, is a malaria-like disease caused by Babesia microti. The protozoa live in ticks of the genus Ixodes and are transmitted when these arthropods feed in human skin. Areas of coastal Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Long Island, New York have experienced outbreaks in recent years. Babesia macrodi penetrates human red blood cells. As the cells disintegrate, a mild anemia develops. Piercing headaches accompany the disease and occasionally meningitis may occur. Toxoplasmosis affects up to 50% of the world's population, including 50 million Americans. Thus, the causative agent, Toxoplasma gondii, is regarded as the universal parasite. Some researchers believe it is the most common parasite of humans and other vertebrates. T. gondii exists in three forms, the trophozoit, the cyst, and the ocyst. Trophozoites are crescent-shaped or oval organisms without flagella. Located in tissue during the acute stage of the disease, they force their way into all mammalian cells. In order to enter cells, the parasites form a ring-shaped structure on the host cell membrane and then pull the membrane over themselves, much like pulling a sock over the foot. Cysts develop from the trophozoite within host cells and may be the source of repeated infections. Muscle and nerve tissue are common sites of cysts. Ocysts are oval bodies that develop from the cysts by a complex series of asexual and sexual reproductive processes. Humans become infected with toxoplasmosis through contact with feces of an infected cat or consumption of undercooked contaminated beef. Let's observe how this might occur. Birds and rodents acquire the parasites from the soil. A cat then becomes infected when it consumes an infected rodent or bird. A child might be infected when it comes in contact with the cat or by playing in contaminated sand from a sandbox. A woman might gain infection by contact with contaminated cat litter. 
Or consumers may become infected by contaminated and undercooked pork, chicken, or beef. If toxoplasmosis occurs during pregnancy, the fetus becomes infected by passage across the placenta. Primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM, is a rare disease with less than 200 cases reported worldwide since 1965. However, it is the most deadly disease of the central nervous system after rabies. 95% of patients die within four to five days of the infection. PAM is caused by several species of thermophilic parasites in the genus Naglaria, especially in Fowlery. It also can be caused by Acanthamoeba and Hartmanella species. Nagleria is an opportunistic pathogen of humans, causing meningoencephalitis when inhaled by swimming in contaminated warm surface waters. The free-living trophozoites appear to enter the body through the mucous membranes of the nose and then follow the olfactory tracts to the brain. The symptoms resemble those of other forms of encephalitis and meningitis. Nasal congestion precedes piercing headaches, fever, delirium, neck rigidity, and occasional seizures if the victim is not treated with amphotericin B combined with myconazole and rifampin. The helminths are multicellular and are among the world's most common animal parasites. For example, 2 billion people, approximately 33% of the human population, are infected with the soil-transmitting helminths. There are two groups of parasitic helminths, the flatworms and the roundworms. Animals in the phylum platyhelminths, platy meaning flat, and helmin meaning worm, are the flatworms. As multicellular animals, they have tissues functioning as organs in organ systems. However, they have no specialized respiratory or circulatory structures, and they lack a digestive tract. The gut, or gastrovascular cavity, simply consists of a sac with a single opening, thus placing the worm in close contact with its surroundings. The trematodes includes the flukes, which have flattened, broad bodies. Trematodes have a complex life cycle that may include encysted egg stages and temporary larval forms. Sucker devices are commonly present to enable the parasite to attach to the host. In many cases, two hosts exist, an intermediate host, which harbors the larval form, and a definitive host, which harbors the mature adult form. The other group of flatworms is the cestodes, which includes the tapeworms. These parasitic worms have a head region called the scolex and a ribbon-like body consisting of segments called proglottids. The proglottids existing the most distant from the scolex are filled with fertilized eggs. As the proglottids break free, they can then spread eggs. Tapeworms generally live in the intestines of a host organism. In this environment, they are consistently bathed by nutrient-rich fluid from which they absorb food already digested by the host. Tapeworms have adapted to a parasitic existence and have lost their intestines, but they still retain well-developed muscular, excretory, and nervous systems. Tapeworms require at least two hosts. Humans often become infected by eating undercooked meat containing tapeworm cysts, which then develop into mature adult worms. Among the most prevalent animals are the roundworms in the phylum Nematoda, Nema meaning thread. These parasites have a thread-like body and occupy every imaginable habitat on Earth. They live in the sea, in fresh water, and in soil from polar regions to the tropics. They parasitize every conceivable type of plant and animal, causing both economic crop damage and serious disease in animals. Damage in hosts, generally by large worm burdens in the blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, or intestines. The infection may result in nutritional deficiency or damage to the muscles. Schistosomiasis is caused by several species of blood flukes. The eggs of these parasites are deposited in water through human feces. Muricidia escape from the eggs and swim to snails. In snails, which are the intermediate hosts, these muricadia develop into sucariae. The sucariae then penetrate the skin of a person who walks in the water. This person then becomes the definitive host. The sucariae then pass into the bloodstream where the infection takes place. Approximately 50,000 people die each year from beef and pork tapeworm diseases. Humans are definitive hosts for both beef tapeworms caused by tinea saginata 
and the pork tapeworm, Tinea solium. Humans acquire the tapeworm cysts by eating poorly cooked beef or pork. The beef tapeworm may reach 10 meters in length, while the pork tapeworm is between 2 and 8 meters long. Dogs and other canines, such as wolves, foxes, and coyotes, are the definitive hosts for dog tapeworms belonging to the genus Echinococcus. Eggs reach the soil in feces and spread to numerous intermediate hosts, one of which is humans. Contact with the dog may also account for transmission. In humans, the parasites travel by the blood to the liver, where they form thick walled hydatid cysts. Common symptoms include abdominal pain, chest pain, and coughing up blood. The most prevalent helminthic infection in the United States is pinworm disease, where an estimated 30% of children and 16% of adults serve as hosts. Pinworm disease is caused by Enterobias vermicularis. The life cycle of the pinworm is relatively simple. Females migrate to the anal region at night and lay a considerable number of eggs. The area itches intensely and scratching contaminates the hands and bed liners with eggs. Reinfection can take place if the hands are brought to the mouth or if eggs are deposited in food by the hands. The eggs are then swallowed, whereupon they hatch in the duodenum and mature into regions beyond. Most of us are familiar with the term trichinolysis because packages of pork usually contain warnings to cook the meat thoroughly to avoid this disease. This disease is rare in the United States. Trichinellosis often is caused by small parasitic worms, Trichinella spiralis. The worm lives in the intestines of pigs and several other mammals. Larvae of the worm migrate through the blood and penetrate the pig's skeletal muscles where they remain in cysts. When raw pork or poorly cooked pork is consumed, the cyst passes on to the human intestines and the worms emerge. Intestinal pain, vomiting, nausea, and constipation are common symptoms. Ascariasis is an infection with Ascariris lumbricodes, a parasite that is the second most prevalent multicellular parasite in the United States. Globally, the WHO estimates that there are 1.4 billion infections and 380 million cases worldwide, leading to about 60,000 deaths every year, especially in tropical and subtropical regions. Two hookworms, both about 10 millimeters in length, may be involved in human disease. The first is the old worm hookworm, or Ancelostoma duodenale, which is found in Europe, Asia, and the United States. The second is the New World hookworm, Necator americanus, which is prevalent in the Caribbean islands. These parasites live in the human intestine, where they suck blood from the ruptured capillaries. Hookworm disease is therefore accompanied by blood loss and is generally manifested by anemia. Cysts also become lodged in the intestinal wall, and ulcer-like symptoms may develop. Hookworm larvae can grow to adults and infect the lymphatic system, where they can survive for up to seven years, causing extensive inflammation and damage to the lymphatic vessels and lymph glands. After years of infection, the arms, legs, and scrotum swell enormously and become distorted, causing a condition known as elephantitis. Elephantitis is so named because of the swelling of lymphatic tissues called lymphedema and the resemblance of the skin to elephant hide. The adult worms mate and release millions of microfilari into the blood, which are then ingested in mosquitoes during a blood meal. There, they develop into infective larvae ready to be passed along to another human during the next blood meal. Thank you for watching.